do you think you are? You're, you're bullying people. I don't care about the task. And then MTV went around and, and said that they fired us. So that was a, the first time I left it was after Rudy's sake. It was because I, I, I never got paid for Rudy's. What? I did for free. Free. I missed Rudy's. Say, hey, would you like to do it once again? I said, well, I'll do it on one condition. I don't want to use abusive relationship, but I felt that I resented it. I did not want to be in that relationship. Most of them returned the next year and I did apologize to them on camera. Jinko acha laga, wo bhi sahi hai. Jinko bura laga, wo bhi sahi hai. Picking on something that they said or did in their form and piling on the pressure. I don't watch MTV now with Rodis. It's because it was starting to destroy my life. It had destroyed my life. Even they were told to get out or something like that. They were told, no, not interested. I created a persona that was needed for that show. It wasn't, I'm not saying it's not me. I had this anger with society. It first came out during the time I was getting bullied. We want to do Raghu versus Ranvijay. And for me, that was a very fake. And, and actually I had tears in my eyes. We were saying, Raghu, we, we have to have you next. I said, bro, I'll die. I'm going to go through a divorce. People are basing their judgment on that. Firstly, I don't look back. I really think men need to talk. You, you know, don't cry like a girl. Nothing against people who are contestants on reality shows. It's not just not me. Of course, there's a lot of money that's offered every year. For every, I'm undergoing a, another breakup. The way reality shows are being made is much more customized to, oh, task as on a It's not seen as... So season 10 was my last season like that. And in the end of that, I, when you're scared of doing something new, then you stop being MTV. Wow. Uh, Hi Raghu, first of all, it's such a fan moment to even sit with you. I've, really? Yeah, thank you. I've watched you, I watched. I really wanted to do this podcast because you know I do. I'm watching you. You're the reason. You put a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> no, but the fact is, and I'm very, I'm not scared at all <laughs> because you know I am such a fan. You know, I really want to mention this thing you are starting with your brother, Mencyclopedia. I've seen all your podcasts and it was so fabulous that someone is actually there to speak about these things. It is such a hats off thing. But Raghu, I know you, you have a busy day ahead, so I don't want to waste your time. And uh, no, but, I don't waste time at all. It's a pleasure. Thank you. It really means a lot. And I want to do justice to this podcast as much as I can. And I've prepared a couple of questions. So Raghu, uh, you don't need any introduction. Um, you are... You are the starter of MTV and you know, you started everything. We are there. We saw you and we're like, okay, MTV is there because you were the face of MTV, right? So I have this question for you. Like, you know, MTV was really popping in 2005 and 2010, right? Because it was a music channel and suddenly, you know, reality shows came in the picture. Hmm. Right. And then now the hype is still there, but it's not the same, same. Like, you know, how it was back then. Because there were topics you all were discussing which were very new for the TV. And I'm sure you would have gotten criticism for that as well. So now if you see MTV, what is that one thing which is, you know, what is not there, there, you know, like the hype I'm talking about. Because there used to be rights in Rodi's audition. I know it. So what is that one thing that changed? What was your sauce to Rodi's? Well, I'll give you my opinion. Uh, I don't know if it's a secret sauce or something. Firstly, I don't watch MTV now. Um, and I don't think I'm alone here. I think uh, MTV somewhere has lost the leadership position that it had amongst the youth. Uh, when it launched internationally also with music videos and even in India, with it had a, it had a counterculture, a rebellious, irreverent kind of a vibe. You know, which really appealed to the youth. Everything else was so traditional and this was very different like that. And that was the attitude that defined MTV. In fact, uh, my generation, Gen X, around that time was also came to be defined by MTV. It was known as the MTV generation. That was because the world over, whatever music videos were being played, those were the songs people were listening to. Those were the kind of clothes people were wearing. Those were the kind of, th that was the buzz that was happening. In India, there was uh, MTV really cemented its um, its brand by some really innovative uh, uh, what we call vignettes and and um, promos. So I will give that credit to uh, Cyrus Oshidar, the man. He was yeah. if, if you saw MTV back then, his title used to come in the end as Guiding Light Cyrus O. Yeah. He was, he's he's a crazy guy and uh, he employed, he identified and employed mental people, crazy people who embodied the MTV attitude, who were counterculture, who did not follow, who had, the, who danced to their own beat, you know, 
be it uh, bakra be it fully faltu be it uh, any of these award winning uh, counter culture promos that came out were created by mavericks who would who found repetition and following others boring that's why they ended up doing unique stuff and st- uh, ended up uh, setting trends mtv was known to set trends which the youth follow but two three things happened after that this is my opinion and i could be wrong um firstly i think uh, the internet came about which democratized cre- uh, content creation now there are people who want to create counter culture or innovative cutting edge kind of content they don't need a platform like mtv or any other tv broadcaster exactly. to showcase their work they have their own uh, way to do that so people were doing and then mtv the people who created beat sara soshidar rajiv me um there were all these uh, oap on air promos department people moved on to other things and now the the management that is there this is my personal opinion <clears throat> is is doing a good job of running the business okay but their business is a business of numbers their business is a business of revenue ratings and that these are not maverick create, creative mavericks these are marketing geniuses maybe these are these are sales uh, uh, you know prodigies but they end up playing safe they end up selling making things that sell not selling things that are made and because of that mtv stopped doing mtv others started doing mtv right these two things happened so now um, i think mtv has stopped innovating we st- we are on season 20 of roadies we are on season 15 of splits villa yes, um so these are the i i really um, where is that revolutionary new concept that even the internet hasn't thought of but because if people have that today they are more interested in do- and they should they should uh do it their own way they don't need mtv and then mtv keeps the rights and keeps the revenue and all that it shouldn't happen having said that mtv needs to now collaborate with with creative mavericks in this space do you know that tvf at one point had approached mtv and said hey we want to make a show for you and they were told to get out or something like that they were told no not interested look wow. at what tvf has done yeah really that happened before tvf became tvf they had approached mtv with their shows somebody did not have the vision of saying hey man this is something that the youth or people would love to watch it's new when you're scared of doing something new then you stop being mtv that's what has happened in my wow. mind love the answer oh ragu people also say that you you know you because i have friends who told me that you basically directed edited you were a one man army on the set when rodies was i wasn't happy. a one man army but i was involved in everything i had a very strong team <laughs> like you used to yes, but i was yeah the concept was mine the creatives i was heading the creatives uh, of every episode um i was uh, supervising the direction of the show i was supervising the editing i was one of the editors as well uh, ended up being one of the faces of the show as well and uh, was very involved in the uh, marketing and and uh, brand positioning of each season so yeah, basically you up... were showing people yourself like when you were putting uh, the contestants in so much pressure Do you know to check or uh, to check the mentally you know mentally if they are mentally fit for the show so you wanted audience to see that part of you yeah see that i'm a very private person okay um till the time rajiv came on on in season 6 nobody knew i had a twin brother you know people didn't know anything about my family the fact that i have a sister rajiv and i have a sister is not a very well known thing uh i just uh, uh, my first telugu film came out called kira kola oh, last week and actually third and uh, till that time nobody knew that i was telugu they thought I was a north indian i knew you knew right so I but it, this is i have written about it in my book also but generally even the people down south they were very shocked that uh, that uh, i knew the language in fact i i had roots there um being a very per- private person it it i was only comfortable showing a side of me that was different okay if people do not understand me i believe i feel like there is a privacy that has been is intact i am safe if people know me if people understand me i feel my privacy has been uh, broached has been breached sorry uh, there's been an intrusion i find it uh, this thing i created a persona that was needed for that show 
it was i'm not saying it's not me it was a part of me everybody is different people at the same time you know the way you are with your friends with your family with with kids with your seniors at work whatever is is different but these are all you these are all you this was a part of me a part of me that that was counter culture that was undergoing a lot of uh, introspection as well as um questioning my own beliefs and the world around me um i was uh, i became an atheist i was against religion i was anti theist it's called um i was against i was i had this anger with society uh, and i expressed that i i personified that into that guy i'll call him rudy zrabu and that was the guy where i let loose my my frustration yeah. with the way society was that's not only me people think that that's all i do that every interaction of mine is is at uh, at the loudest volume top of my lungs and screaming at people abusing them not at all in fact uh, the abusive language was something that that i did for my own reasons i did i wanted people to th- realize that this is not happening for camera they had to ignore the camera so i had to use unparliamentary language that they really kind of made them focus on me and not the cameras around me that became the focus of of what i was saying to a lot of people having said that um, yes this is something that i showed people for the 10 years that i did rodis i did not let anything else of mine um be seen by anybody when you say that you wanted audience to see that raghu you wanted to show who was frustrated by the society like he was raghu rodis so do you think people connected with that raghu because i felt like i did i did i actually didn't think of that at all uh like uh, like you said i was very busy um you know there was two months of pre production one month of recking and and auditions then there was one month of shooting and then there was eight to nine months maybe 10 months eight months of uh, of editing and then the whole cycle began again i was in a bubble of my own i used to do i used to shoot but it's just that every year when i the only time i interacted went out into the world was during the auditions these five cities that i went to and there i saw the craziness increasing a lot and I, i i it always took me by surprise i said what is happening you know because in my life none of this was real i was just doing my thing there was my team and that's what that's it. so you never uh, cared about the money like you know what are you making i i, I never got paid for rodis what i did for free free zero rupees zero i only uh, i was an employee with mtv and uh, i was just getting a salary like everybody else till season Six seven. Six happened. I quit uh, MTV. You quit in seven. So you quit in seven. I was. There. I quit MTV. Yeah. So one two three four five six was zero money. Then uh, season eight nine ten. I kind of co-produced with Rajiv. Rajiv had a company called Colosseum. Uh, so there I I got paid a little bit. But uh, no, Rudy's was not a money thing for me. Rudy's is is was completely a passion project, and I did it for free. Wow, I did not know that. Now, Prabhu, coming back to your book. In your book, you said that you were bullied when you were a kid, and you had your own rough journey. What do you have to say about that? I think um, bullying is. There are few things that are traumatic enough to scar you and alter you, your psyche for life. Being raped, being molested, being. these are obvious ones of course these are things that will that will scar you for life that have the potential of doing that being bullied being discriminated against being minimized being sidelined these are also things that will change the way you look at yourself and the way you think of yourself okay people internalize it a lot of times a lot of girls will not have high ambitions because they've always been ha tu to ladki hai i'm just giving an example it's not just for girls it's for a lot of guys bullying is something that 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 really has defined my life the rudy's guy that you see on camera i call him rudy's raghu i compare him to hulk he's not like me at all in many ways uh, of course he is the expression of my rage against society but i am a very non confrontational guy i never raise my voice generally and um, i don't use language like that i do not uh, fight i actually avoid conflict this guy looks for it okay. this guy will do everything that i don't want to do that i personally don't want he is actually i have always said he's taller people see me now and say sir we thought you would be bigger taller or or, or broader 
that's because that guy was he is that hulk you know he only came out a lot of times when i was threatened it first came out during the time i was getting bullied um and i realized that i had it in me that something switched at some point where i was no longer in control of what was happening but this guy was giving it back to the bullies i think it is somebody that that is a part of my psyche he would come out and till the time he he would come out to protect me when i was scared or when i was uncomfortable and uh, he would do his thing and go and i'd be left to deal with the with the rubble that he had left behind yeah it happened a lot thing i was watching his documentary in which beyonce said that that i'm not the person you know i i like you know i become on stage her stage name is different and she's a very different person when she goes back home so uh, is that somewhere you are heading to I, i i really think that people as they are are not interesting enough on stage or on camera a lot of times a lot of times uh, artists are i've read somewhere and i believe in it uh, artists are born out of the tension between uh, your need to express yourself and your desperation to hide yourself oh wow so yeah. that kind of forces people a lot of artists will when you see them off stage or when they're in their own person you'll be like you're nothing like i expected because they're not they're not they they create a persona it's not even a, it's not even deliberate yeah. it just happens you know so yeah like people, like i meet people and i've seen them on tv and i meet them in real life and i'm like yaar tu to aisa hai hi nahi jaisa tere ko dikhaya hai tv pe you know it happens with lot of people like i know lot of people like that some people are deliberate about it some people will put on a persona uh, it could be cringe it could be you know uh, obnoxious yeah to get attention it's working for them uh, but a lot of artists like me like a lot of other artists i know they don't have a choice it's something they uh, when the spotlight is on this performer or this other persona of theirs will come out take over yeah in their life they they will shy away from <clears throat> from any yeah. attention yeah got it got it ragu i <clears throat> have this question that you just said that you know you were working for free uh but you just were, like on roadies and all that you did not get paid till six season so why, why why did you leave it like like you know like you were doing so good you were creating legacy you have actually created so why did why what happened that why did you because honestly speaking ragu no matter what criticism you got because yesterday i was sitting with couple of my friends and was discussing about you watching your podcast you've done we kind of relate to you because you know we are we are from delhi and like you know we also have that you know i especially have done a reality show like that like i was like oh kitni gali deti hai kitni gali deti hai kitni gali deti hai i just felt like you know that everybody has a way of expressing themselves and whatever you did i could relate to you basically that's where i'm going at so why did you leave it when you were creating like such an iconic thing because you are you are the originator it, thank you i left it two times uh the first time i left it was after rodi 6 um that was because i felt uh a little disconnected with the direction it was starting to go in and uh i also felt a little bored of the same expectation ki mai wohi karta rahu you know Like अगर आप किसी स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन को देखें फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू लुक एट रनजी इज वेरी गुड एट बास्केटबॉल इज वेरी गुड एट क्रिकेट इज वेरी गुड एट टेबल टेनिस इज वेरी गुड एट फुटबॉल पीपल हुआ गुड इन स्पोर्ट्स विल नॉट बी गुड इन जस्ट वन स्पोर्ट दे विल बी गुड इन मेनी दे आर एबल टू एक्सप्रेस दम सेल्स फिजिकली रियली वेल विद इन दोज रूल्स ऑफ दॉट गेम लाइक दैट विद आर्ट इज यूल फाइंड अ लॉट ऑफ uh writers are good actors or directors or music directors are good singers look at someone like a vishal bhardwaj he's a lyricist he makes music he writes scripts he writes dialogues he directs he's very good at all of them like that i had my own um, i do have my own uh, set of um aspirations so i was i was used to write songs I, so i written all the used to write the theme songs for rodies as well as for um the show called teen diva that we did then um, other for agni and for other bands also i used to write i used to i wanted to do that i wanted really? to explore my agni was yeah, yeah? i did some of the songs i wrote yeah okay that's so cool. so uh, thank you 
so I, I there was films coming on. I wanted to explore myself as an actor. Uh, they were all of all these. And on the other hand, was people saying you keep doing the same thing again because it's working for us. Yeah. And that did not. I, I didn't. I found that very very like was, unattractive at that point. I, I said like, you know I've done. I feel like yeah. you were going at uh, like like you know you stagnated like at some point you felt. I oh. felt. I felt. I did not stagnate, but I felt that there was a big possibility that I'll go towards stagnation now. In any event, uh, I missed roadies in the year seven when I didn't do it because that that way of expressing myself yeah. was something that I, I really wanted. The you know I really missed. So roadies eight when the opportunity when they called back to me and say, hey, would you like to do it once again? I said, well, I'll do it on one condition. I'll do it if you allow me to do my own thing. I'll do it the way I, I my way. And they said yes. And that happened for another two years, three years. The last year, season 10. 2010 made, was the last year you did Rudy. I don't know about 2000. But season 10 was when they said we want to do Raghu versus Ranvijay. And for me, that was a that was a very fake premise. Uh, and I told them that. But they said, no, man, this is what we need. This is the new thing. The uh, you know sponsors will love it. This people will love it. And that's when I started seeing that, again, the beginning of Let's make this because it's working, you, because it will sell. So season 10 was my last season like that. And in the end of that, I, they were, I said bye to everybody. There was this song uh, by Agni called Ye Sil Sila Tera Mera. I don't know if you've yeah, seen that song. Yeah, 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 definitely. That is how that season ended. And I said goodbye. Uh, I did it because the second time I quit Rodis, it's because it was starting to destroy my life. It had destroyed my life. It had destroyed. done something to my life. Stride. I am using that word because, um, firstly, a creator is happy. There are people who want fame, and there are people who want to create. Yeah. I'm somebody who wants to create, yeah. and the fame happened. I didn't. I was a creator. It, I was not supposed to become known or famous or anything. It happened. It mm -hmm. it became. And my my the nature of my, uh, the nature of my fame was very very intense and and uh, controversial so there was a lot of hate coming my way there's a lot of intense adulation coming my way um there were bodyguards that are required because people used to keep mobbing me every time i stepped out of the house i was i just spent two three months in my house i would not come out because i would not look people in the eye and so it's, it's because my privacy was completely gone and my personal life had ceased to exist my marriage there was a lot of pressure on my marriage at that time because uh i was completely uh, what's the word for it engrossed and engulfed in in making this show this show became me i became this show which was a problem there's a lot of other sides of mine which were getting ignored and 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 my mental health was also because everything i was just at existing at a high level of intensity all the time and it must have been very difficult for my wife at that time uh, Suganda of course uh, I, I actually I, I remember once sitting in front of the head of the channel and, and actually I had tears in my eyes we were saying Dragu we, we have to have you next I said bro I'll die I just can't do this anymore I'll go I'm going I'm going to go through a divorce can you please let me out of this one? I can't do this. And then MTV went around and, and said that they fired us. So that was a very hurtful thing that they did. Having said that, my my marriage, well, it didn't survive. Uh, but it wasn't roadies that broke it. Uh, it was my political activism. When I, uh, for five years, all I did was uh, travel the country campaigning. Um, and that was something that that ended my marriage. And, and my entire, so I had, all these things that I was talking about, telling the youth to have a voice, to be responsible, to, to change the world. When in 2011 and 12, Anna Zai and Ahmadi Party's creation and the uh, Nirbhaya gang rape and, and the youth of the country stood up. And I, told, and I told myself that, boss, it's time to walk your talk. You've been talking for 10 years now. They have stood up. Now what are you made of? Will you stand with them or are you going to just talk? So I quit everything and I stood with them. Uh, then for five years that was that having said that I am very happy to have quit Rudy's and I'm very happy to have distanced myself from 
all the intensity, the stress and the negativity that it brought along with a lot of positives. It gave yes. me a voice. It gave me a, it gave me something that a lot of people till today connect with. And for that, I'm grateful. But I don't think I would have survived much longer in my, in my life with Rodi's. But Raghu, I have this question. I, can, I, can, I, can I just add one more thing? Yes. yes. I think the way Rodi's is happening now is healthier. Yeah. I don't think anybody's putting their mind, their personality, their soul into the show. Exactly. I think they're making it because that's what they think people want to watch. When I was making it, it was my entire being was poured into every season of it. I was exhausted by the end of it. And uh, this is healthier. Nobody's getting, they can keep doing it for 20 more years because it it's a job. I honestly feel it's like not, not, I honestly feel like done it recently and I I have been a fan of reality shows. I watch all kinds of reality shows. I've watched your also on Netflix. So um I feel like now uh it's like a showbiz. Like, you know, you're selling what people want to see. There is no creativity, like how you started the podcast. I always feel like that when you were there, you were talking about the topics which were not covered on TV. And that's what Never. where youth comes in the picture because that's that's you know you actually you, whatever people are coming there are you know they're not old. I, like I didn't do it. I didn't do it because we thought people would want to watch it because there's nothing like that happened before. It was like I said, MTV was known for setting trends because they hired mad people. And they let them do their shit. They, they would never interfere. People said that, um, how do I put this in a nice, you were mean to the contestants. There was also this perception um, and like in like an orthodox family, people would not let their kids watch, you know, roadies. And Splitsville as me also when I was a kid. My mom never used to let me watch uh, roadies and Splitsville because you know, of the, of whatever was shown on TV. So, um, how do you, like, what was your theory behind putting contestants, if, if I, if I may say, in that much pressure? Like, what were you looking for in the contestants back then? Look, in those interview rooms, there were two things that were happening. First was, we were casting for a reality show. And the second was, we were shooting a television episode of the auditions. These are two separate things. Now, if it's a singing reality show, uh, you can know whether this person is a good contestant or not by hearing them sing. If it's a cooking show, you can taste what they've made. Dancing show, talent show, whatever. What is roadies? What was roadies? How am I going to figure out how this person... So the concept of the whole philosophy behind roadies is that the world is unfair and your spirit will be tested. It will, you will either soar or you will break. I represented the unfair world. Whenever I came in, the rules changed very unfairly. How am I going to test a person's reactions in a room, I'm not. It's not fear factor that I. I don't care about the tasks. I really don't. If it was fear factor, I would make them jump from a place and you know stuff like that. Over here, I wanted to see how they react under pressure when the things are just going against them. Do they quiet down? Do they become quiet? Do they cry? Do they become violent? Do they become? Do they uh, cleverly put it and win our hearts? What is the reaction? So the only way I could do that was by picking on something that they said or did in their form and piling on the pressure. Obviously, now this is something that's happening on the creating uh, the casting of a reality show. Meanwhile, and these each interaction was minimum one hour long, one to one hour to one and a half hours long. Oh. Meanwhile, there's a uh, reality show that's being shot episode and those interactions are maximum 10 minutes, 6 to 10 minutes. So we'd only take the most spicy kind of a viewer kind of reactive kind of bits and put them on air. So people are basing their judgment on that. I don't blame them. It is what they're seeing. It is what we're showing them. So they're fa basing those opinions on that. Um this is what I was looking for. I was looking to see how, whether their reactions are interesting 
when they're put under pressure because that's when things are not going as you planned. You've come and you've planned that, okay, he's going to say this, I'm going to say this. You, you know, everybody has a, a perceived kind of a projected persona that they want to show. My and, and I think Mike Tyson has a very good quote that I believe in. He says, every boxer has a plan till he gets punched in the mouth. Oh. After that, instinct, instinct takes over. It was our job to punch them figuratively in the mouth. I wanted to see what their instinctive reaction was because I was going to the show was designed to just make keep them uncomfortable, keep them out of their comfort zone, keep them really put the pressure on and see how they behave. Do they compromise on their stated values for success and survival or do they do they prefer going out in a blaze of glory and, and still, you know, respect is more important than, than survival? Those were the questions back then. And uh, this was the way we made that show. Um, I think people are uh, not wrong in having a problem with that. Uh, it depends on, you know, some the same people have said, dude, I learned so much from these episodes. And some people have same episodes. Some people have said, you know, who do you think you are? You are really, you know, you're, you're bullying people and stuff like that. Whereas in my mind, I was not bullying people. I was standing up to bullies. If people were discriminating against anyone, I see them as bullies. And I would always stand up against those doing the discrimination in favor of those being discriminated against. Maybe it's girls, maybe it's homosexuals, maybe it's any other um, sideline community yeah. of society. Um, I I don't have, I think Jinko Acha Laga, Wo Bhi Sahi Hai. Jinko Bura Laga, Wo Bhi Sahi Hai. Rabu, if you Even look chill- back, you want to change anything? If you look back? Firstly, I don't look back. Okay. Okay. You're talking about a part of my life which was there, which ended 10 years ago. Right? Uh, there's a lot that's going on in my life that keeps me busy and that keeps me uh, excited. But people keep talking to me about roadies. So I, I'm I'm forced once in a while to, like right now, to look back. Uh, I wrote it in my book also. There was one or two auditions where things got too heated. And... Uh, most of them returned the next year and I did apologize to them on camera and I put it on as part of the episode also because I really do not like people when they when they scream in front of everybody but call them into their room separately and apologize because that you know if you have if you've done the same platform same way you have to apologize that's my belief and I did there are a few who did not Raghu how are you under pressure like do you thrive or how how do you handle pressure? Wow. Uh, see, there are some areas which where pressure is good. I'm always I've always worked under pressure, uh, be it time or lack lack of time or lack of budget or lack of energy, lack of sleep. Uh, you know, um, I have done well. But that is when I have to create something. Outside of a creative life, I don't know if I will handle pressure well because I'm not capable. Like I, my son is here. He wants attention. <laughs> Buddy. Can he, can he come say hi? Can he no, say- we, we, we avoid uh, showing yeah. him. <laughs> I'll have to make up for this. A mundane part of life. And I don't, I'm not sure I'll take uh, pressure well. Uh, pressure brings out a lot of times the best in me. Raghu, coming back to your book, Review uh, My Rodi's Journey. In that book, you said goodbye to Rodi's. Was that a good, good goodbye? Or was it just like, okay, I'm done? A, I have also gone through a divorce. Yeah. And I'll tell you it was similar. She's still a very close friend of mine. Okay, we are very, we are much better as buddies than as a couple. Yeah. So we uncoupled and discovered, rediscovered our friendship. Uh, with Rodi's, it was the same. I, I, I have fond memories of it, hmm. but in itself, I felt that like I, I, I don't want to use abusive relationship, but I felt that I resented it. I did not want to be in that relationship. I wanted out. Not because I hate it. It has been very good to me. It has been weird for me also. 
but i just wanted out for my mental peace for my mental health and my my life so uh, it's a good goodbye at good. that time i was happy to say goodbye with no complaints but the fact that i think we need to live our separate lives now you live your own life now which it is doing and i live my own life ragu and your equation with ranvijay is crazy cool like whenever we see you and ranvijay together on instagram or any social media platform we're always intrigued to know god this is still happening ogs together so how's your equation with ranvijay and nikhil like like how, Look, how i don't now get to spend much time with them uh both nikhil and ranvijay but whenever we connect it is like nothing no day, no time has passed you know i think uh both nikhil ranvijay or even cyrus brocha we recently met him again for his podcast uh i have mad respect for them because even before i uh, became on air and was employed by mtv these guys were setting trends they were doing something which was amazing look at uh, nikhil chenappa for example he was a vj and yeah. a very stylish very approachable one but he he had a passion for music and djing and mixing and he became that he pursued that while doing his full time job and he got that and he he's got he started festivals all across india he's he revolutionized certain industries with it ranvijay uh he is a brand on to himself you know be it sports be it his uh, squad run videos or be it uh, you know his passion for sneakers be it his whatever he does he's he's passionate about it and 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 inspires people so these are people that i have mad respect for and whenever we meet we meet at a at a very fond camaraderie kind of a level because we were in the trenches together yes. when you are in battle and in the trenches together you there is a certain bond that is forged which time cannot taint or touch i i <clears throat> i have nothing but love for them and whenever we meet it's a blast ragu now i have this i'm very in, i really am curious to know when we can watch this podcast of yours men side men side yeah with i'm Raj- working on it with Raj- it's actually rajiv's brain child and Raj- i'm just uh, coming along for the ride so uh, the first time I have a question. Why only men? Like, why are you not, you know, like targeting the females? Also, would like to know your POV on their questions, you know, and how can we get get in touch with you? And like, what do we do to, you know, when is this coming? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll I'll tell you. Uh, firstly, men, because of a certain reasons, uh, there are a lot of platforms and places where women's issues are discussed as they should be. as it should be women have a lot of issues that they are facing that they need probably need guidance and and they need a community and support men don't have that men actually have a very peculiar problem where acknowledging a problem is seen as unmanly yeah you're dealing with the with a community of people a class of people a gender who find it unmanly to talk about problems so that is a huge issue i really think men need to talk when culturally you are stopped from talking when culturally you feel stopped from e- expressing vulnerability or weakness your mental health is going to go and if there is so much pressure on boys not to say that girls don't undergo pressure but there are avenues where we are addressing that or hopefully starting to but men we are not doing that what men have is that they have something called a manosphere created by people like andrew tate and all which is very misogynistic they have equated manliness with manhood with misogyny where you're a man if you beat women if you man if you dominate women you man if you do that and that's not that's not man i really we really wanted to reopen a discussion on on what is masculinity because the the, the influences we're getting from be it popular culture films television they're very toxic they're very regressive they're very um angry young men why like not that you know like they they, they care yeah. for themselves and they are also they also i think yeah, they so, have a yeah. feminine side also to them this is what i feel like that yeah why not but but that feminine side is looked down on don't you, you know don't cry like a girl don't play like a girl don't fight like a girl it's it, these it, like a girl become being a pussy stuff like that this becomes really uh, um buckets that we chains that we tie men with yeah, and rajiv yeah. and i because of 
of being boys being men uh, growing up in a city and a town and a time where the definition of manhood was very different and interacting with thousands of boys uh, through rodis auditions or otherwise uh, have i think unique we uniquely positioned to have to start this conversation it's not a conversation that is uh, is owned by us or led by us it is it is a platform we're trying to create for people to participate so since we are not con- casting for a show like rodis we do not need to make it intense and all that it's a very different way of expressing and approaching uh, the subject uh but you'll find that a lot of our topics deal with gender issues which touch women upon uh, upon women as well men's relationship with rejection men's uh, uh con- issues with confidence these are things there where it's it has to do with uh, profession as well as personal life and and love life so you will find us uh, indirectly touching upon points that are interesting to women as well or end of importance to women as well but a focus our bullseye is is men's issues and the male experience itself because i don't think we're talking about it so rabu uh-huh. all of these questions you'll be answering will be coming from your own experiences a lot of them are from our own experiences and our own observation uh, there is also a, a web um, email address it's uh, mencyclopedia@raghurajiv.com where uh, people write into us with their issues and sometimes we we definitely answer them uh but sometimes we also make episodes out of it okay uh we've taken a break now but uh, rajiv and i are working on uh, making it uh, an hour long what discussion uh, video podcast hmm. uh but i don't know when that will happen because we there are projects that are keeping us busy right now but that is a priority i think men's health men men's mental health and men cyclopedia is something that is a passion project again for rajiv and me Raghu uh one more question will be will will we ever see you doing like big boss or you know like one more time on tv or you creating one more show because i would love to watch it i don't care about other people thank you rajiv i will not uh, be i am not a contestant on reality shows ever uh, yeah. because that's not who i am uh, i i believe um, like i said i would rather create and observe and tell those stories rather than be a character in somebody else's wow vision I don't i don't know if i they said doctors make the worst patients i just i i, I nothing against people who are contestants on reality shows it's not just not me of course there's a lot of money that's offered every year for every show that comes out i've not taken it because that's not who i am and uh, i think i have my relationship with reality shows is changing the way it happened with rodis i think after irl in real love which was my show on netflix my i'm undergoing a, another breakup with reality shows this time and i think uh, i think i have many stories to tell like rodis for me was about a story be it an audition or be it a se- episode of the journey or, or the whole season itself it was a story it was not about okay now it's a task now it's a vote out now it's a journey um i think now uh, the way reality shows are being made is much more customized to be, oh task aise hone chahiye it's not seen as a story and i think i have many more stories to tell but now i'm exploring that in fiction i've written a short film which i'm going to direct i'm working i'm writing my feature film as well there is uh, acting that i'm doing in telugu films as well as a web series that i've signed for amazon mini tv um so there are many uh, like i said uh, other expressions of my my creative persona that i'm exploring um i don't know if reality shows is i think we need we need separation we need space from each other like another couple like a couple that you know needs distance i think i am separated from reality shows for now raghu anything you want to add about mental health before i take your leave like anything you want to tell to the youth who are going through a lot of pressure in real life are like stuck are going through a lot of pressure yeah they are they always go through a lot of pressure um i mean there's not one thing that i can say i just say that it's okay to be weak and vulnerable you're, you're allowed to do that you're not the concept of being a man be there for people who need help that is a being a man but needing help is not wrong family or or you know Yeah. lady like so wrong i don't it, i don't feel like everybody i think can seek for help i have yeah, you know, yeah. we all need help i need help 
I need help and I reach out. There are people that I reach out to. And I hope uh, everybody does that. That's all. Raghu, thank you for your time. It's been such a pleasure. It was such a learning experience. That's, the such pleasure a, is mine. And you were <laughs> such a sweetheart. I just wish I, you know, hope to even like see you once in real life. You are amazing. Sure. Amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for doing this. It really means a lot to All me. All the best to you. I really like uh, your sincerity and your uh, effort. And um, I hope uh, you go from strength to strength. And with every year, you go closer to where you want to be. Thank you. Thank you, Raghu. It was such a pleasure. Bye.